Oh, they're considered one vending machine. Damn. That sucks. Okay, um... Let's go to the market real quick. Shoes. I see it's uh, like the hat accessory slot or something. Okay. That's fine. 15k is not that much. Legendary scarf. Head over to the Merchant's Guild. So 70 attack. Okay, now yeah, the Breaker's Sword is way weaker. Really, Club is the strongest staff weapon? It's interesting. I have one of those. Thirty-two defense. Minus four attack. That was really high defense, so. Six, so it's ten more defense. That is for attack, though. Oh well, I'll get it. Um, ancient armor. So we're gonna try Louie again. This time though. I'm gonna bring uh sandwich plate. Actually no. Ancient armor. Alright, and then more healing items here. Let's see. Oh, we got plenty of beeples. Let's bring those. Those are good for healing. Alright, let's go with that. <laughs> Tress again. Um, I probably could have gotten through it if I hadn't have screwed out around on that one floor with the... Uh, SP consumption has. So he equipped all the stuff I brought. Good. I was hoping that he would. Oh, nice. And this is more about getting items than it is level, uh, getting through the dungeons, so. And getting through the dungeons is the secondary goal, but the primary is getting valuable items. 
good. So now we're... Wow, another one of those. So now we're taking just minor damage, which is good. At least from those guys. <clears throat> the problem with equipping adventurers is getting them to buy it from your store so that you don't have to bring it with you. Um, should always be your main goal when you buy stuff for an adventurer is to eventually sell it to them, but... Holy crap. All kinds of stuff there. But the hard part is actually getting them to buy it and making sure nobody else buys it. Sometimes you can sort of engineer it to work that way. Other times you just have to wait for them to come and ask for something and then give it to them. Those guys still t do tons of damage. At least not like the 40 they were doing before. They both miss that. These are the guys that are grabbing the poison stones, right? I think so. And we leveled up. Nice. Why couldn't he level up sooner? Like on the last time we were here. <laughs> Could have saved some pretty good items, but oh well. Take advantage of the half SP usage here. So, um, changing my discussion about E3 from the live stream walkthrough for uh, SL that we're doing. Uh, SO3. Um, I think that it was a tie really between Sony and Nintendo for this E3. Um, Sony showed some interesting stuff. Um, Days Gone showed a little more from that. Um, last, uh, not Last Guardian, but uh, Shadow of the Colossus remake. That was awesome. Let's see that. Um, now that I look back on it a little bit more, I really just trashed the Spider-Man thing <laughs> on YouTube, but, um, the more I look back on that, it, the more it seems like it could be okay. It's just, it seems like there's just way too much superhero crap out these days, and media in general, you know, movies getting remade over and over and over again, and, uh, it's now starting to spill over into the, uh, gaming industry. But it could be okay. It looks actually kind of interesting. It's like basically, it's basically like prototype or watchdogs, except Spider-Man. Have to Um, I still think Bethesda's E3 was total crap. Um, I for the only if. 
if for one reason and one reason only because they talked down to uh, gamers with that stupid kitty movie thing they did. Bethesda Land. Um, for the full list of things, there's also the bring back their stupid paid mods ID. And, um... They really didn't show much of anything at all, to be honest. I'm not really into Elder Scrolls Online at all. Um, I, it's just because I played so many MMO games; they're all just they're they're all predictably boring. Doesn't matter, even if the subject matter is awesome. Like, you know, Sky, you know, Elder Scrolls and all that kind of stuff. Morrowind, whatever. It just degenerates into a mission fest. You know, go fetch this, go do that. Go to this place that's going to take you ten minutes to get there. And then once you get there, really, picnic basket. It's a treasure item I've never seen before. Um... And once you get there, go do more of the same stuff. Kill these enemies. Go get those items from these enemies. Um, yeah, go pick up this item from the NPC. Blah, 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 blah. It's all the same. Since you played one MMO, you played them all, basically. Um, structural, structural wise. Structure. Structure wise. Um, there's no such thing as an innovative MMO. It doesn't exist. The last truly innovative MMO, I think, was uh, Cabal Online. And even after that, well, Cabal Online and then I think Atlantica Online, both. Um, in terms of those respective genres, and EVE Online for the X4 MMO universe kind of stuff. Um, yeah, poison, stuff, crystal, whatever. Um, but I mean, once somebody innovates on something, it immediately becomes non innovative because it's copied ad nauseum. Uh, by other other MMOs that just yeah, you know, it just seems like the MMO sphere to me is inherently not innovative in that way because MMOs come and go. Um, Shattered Galaxy, Dark Ages, Nexus, um, Maple Story, RuneScape. Um, World of Warcraft, EVE Online, Cabal Online, um, Trickster Online, um, what else is there? And the point I'm making is that there's like a billion MMOs, and 90% of them are just copying things other MMOs have done. There's nothing really very innovative about anything, to be honest, um, with what's out there now. And the ones that were innovative um, are really showing their age in terms of the fact that um, you know you can only run an MMO for so long. Um, look at Ragnarok, on Ragnarok Online, for example. Um, it's still really popular in terms of uh, the private server sector, but. I think the, you know, official servers are pretty much dead or dying, if not dead already. Um, they tried to do something interesting with Ragnarok 2, but that completely failed. Uh, mainly because of bad uh, planning, I think. Um, but it's just, you know, once something truly animated comes out, Like, within a few months, if not maybe maybe a year, um, something else comes out that copies it. Um, uh, there's probably hundreds of Ragnarok Online clubs. Um, Fly FO, or Fly Online, uh, it's another one. Perfect World, I think. It's pretty close to an RR clone. Um, 
Space Cowboys Online, for example, it's, that was one that was kind of innovative, but that pretty much was a niche MMO, and I think it's dead. Drift City, you know, racing MMO, it's probably more of the map now that I know of than that, but I think that was like maybe one of the original ones. Um, so yeah, I'd, MMOs are just, the MMO sector has basically been oversaturated to the point of where it probably deserves to die. Not a horrible death like some other genres, but definitely die, at least, you know, half of the stuff that's out there now should die off because it's just overpopulated beyond belief. And that includes ESO. Um, and for that matter, Final Fantasy XIV. I mean, I can understand an MMO, MMO is a vehicle for sustaining a franchise until, um, you know, you can put out something new. In the case of Elder Scrolls, you don't need to do that because Skyrim's going to be popular until, you know, the sun explodes. <laughs> There's going to be mods always made for that till the sun explodes and people playing it till then. Um, if humanity doesn't kill itself first, even if it does, Skyrim will survive like the... Like cockroaches. I'll be like the last surviving thing of the human race will be Skyrim. I think most of the time, though, what companies try and do with MMOs is they take a successful franchise like Final Fantasy and Elder Scrolls and whatever else, and they try and milk it for all kinds of money because they think they can run it um, pay to play. And they find out that. When they try that, then it fails because people don't want to, you know, pay to play this game that's, you know, similar to other games they've played in the past or have access to that are better than that game. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't believe in MMOs, basically, as a franchise, as a genre. Um, and they're fun and all, but at the same time, you know, Adventure attack power doubled. Good. Only me this time. That's good. Well, it's just me that has the double power. I like that. Because that works. Now, some company came out and did. I'm not saying that companies don't do them right. I mean, Ragnarok Online, Eve Online, um, I guess Nexus to a certain extent from the 90s, um, all did things the right way, which is they had pay to play, but they did it smart. Gold Fishbowl? They didn't just do it like Atlantic Online has, where you just put a whole bunch of crap on your your, your store, and then you know people buy that stuff and have to buy it in order to compete with other. What the hell is that? That was weird. When I hit that thing, it looked like it was a different sprite or something. Um, but yeah, so. When you just like make an MMO to make tons of money, have like a store where you have to have, and you have a certain setup where play players that pay to buy that stuff end up being overpowered and can't be competed against without buying things, which is like I think probably 80% of MMOs out there. Um, then it's not set up correctly. How it should be is you should be able to any player should be able to come in and whether they buy items or not be able to, you know, compete against other players, basically, um, without having to spend, you know, thousands of hours to get to the same point, or to a point where they can compete against somebody that basically paid, played for maybe 30 hours and spent, like, thousands of dollars to get where they're at. Again, it scales with uh, the system they've been put. Like Eve Online, there's, there, you know, Eve Online is Eve Online. 
it's nothing to compare it to. Um, Because it, just of the, the scope of how long it takes to play that game to get anywhere near PvP levels. Um, I should know because I played that game for a long time. Um, it literally take well, this is an old Eve that I think is the more probably properly balanced Eve. Where you had to train up learning skills and then had to, um, in order to be able to train things without taking a year to train them literally. Um, it literally took you about a year and a half. To get to the point to where you could actually do some proper PvP, and that guy shot me out of the wall. What the hell? Hacker. Oh, Durian Fruit. I will take that. It's a very good item for selling. And the only problem is once they go free to play or. Um, they, you know, kind of retool the cat, the, the in-game shop or something, or go free to play if they were a subscription-based thing. The first thing that immediately happens is that the server quality degrades because they don't have the money to be able to support the the player base anymore. Um, just because of the, the scope of the game and the um, amount of data you have to push through the cable to get. Um, things updated on the server when it, like for example uh, a good example that's um player unknowns battlegrounds there's a lot of issues with that game because it's really high quality um in terms of the you know graphics and whatnot and there's also tons of stuff going on on the server side i'm um, sure the net code might be bad but at the same time if the servers are not um, strong enough they're not gonna be able to push all the data required to update everything on the maps i mean you gotta uh, 18 by 8 by 8 kilometer or whatever it is size um, map where you have potentially hundreds of players um, you know you need to have servers that are you know basically supercomputers almost not really but in general comparison to regular systems that people would play on yes there's like supercomputers compared to other servers they're just you know a little bit more beefed up. Mainly it's on the RAM side. But yeah, so I just, you know, yes, the XP gain double. Awesome. Um, it's just that, yeah, MMO, MMOs inherently are nihilistic to me because I mean, eventually it's going to shut down. Eventually. I mean, it may take a year, it may take six months if it really fails. It might take two decades. Like, wow. Um, wow is due to be closed down or at least drastically changed eventually because... I mean, eventually you can only release so many expansions, increase the player level so much before people get totally bored out of their minds, even with the social aspect of it. Um... There, we got two of them. Now I gotta get the third. And like I said, it's the same with any online game. It's just... Eventually, you know, they're gonna end. And all the money that's spent on them is wasted because you don't get anything out because you no longer have access to the game. So, you know, what's the point? And it's the exact same thing why I don't like MP and games for because it's, well, it's with MP and games that are either episodic in nature or are released on a particular schedule, like, for example, Call of Duty. Um, if you buy Call of Duty for MP, the MP, you're going to get at most a year out of it because by the time the next year comes around, um, there's another Call of Duty game and people, you know, move on to that one for the MP, even though it's exactly pretty much the same. Um, 
I mean, what's the point of spending the money on the MP then? Because all that money you could spend in the single player campaign and make it so much better. Uh, we are in an item situation here. Um, that's for health too, I guess. Okay. What is that? Leather glove? That's kind of a crap item. So that turned into a rant of epic proportions. Unintentionally. So we were talking about E3, I think, before then. <laughs> no, Bethesda, yes. Okay, Bethesda's um, conference. So, I mean, outside of Wolf Wolfenstein 2, and I guess the VR stuff was kind of interesting. I can only imagine what people are going to do with uh, Skyrim VR. Um, and if you haven't heard of them before, there's a certain type of mod called Sex Lab Mods. And yes, that is what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> you're putting Skyrim into VR, so that should be interesting. Um, so we all know what, what everything on the internet and any, any technology ever invented eventually is used for porn. So. And that's just a, a, that is a fact of the universe. So what can we get rid of or use to reduce our... I want to keep this stuff because it's, you know, ingredients stuff, but at the same time it's like useless crap for selling. Okay, we got six item slots open. Adventure. Okay. God, these gold guys are annoying. They move too fast. Oh, well. I dodged it without even knowing where that was coming from. That's cool. I almost walked right back into it, though. I got it on the shield. Cool. So those are like the only good things about that. Now, the Sony conference, you know, Days Gone was interesting. Uh, God of War, oh my god, that was awesome. Um, I love the fact they're going from Greek gods to Norse gods. The Norse mythology is kind of my thing. Um, thought that that um, I'm not sure if that was supposed to be. Nidog that they show, or if that's supposed to be some other um, minor god. But the, that snake thing was interesting. It sounded like he was saying, I'm gonna eat your soul and crap you out in little pieces of snake poo <laughs> instead of I'm gonna help you. But still, is awesome. Um, can't wait to see what they come up with that. Uh, for like, I really don't know what the main story is. I'm not even sure if they really have told what the main story is. Um, but it seems like it might be really interesting. Um, what else from the Senate conference was interesting? I guess the Spider-Man thing, again, like I said, was kind of interesting. Uh, I think back on it. Um, that's like, it's not anything innovative. It's not something that hasn't been done a thousand times before. Um, I don't know why people are calling it innovative. I mean... We tried it with Watch Dogs, we tried it with uh, Prototype, they tried it with um, Saint Row. Um, they tried it with. Um, there's one more that I'm forgetting about. I probably back because I probably own it. I played it and liked it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like. It's, I don't know why people are saying it's like cool and. It lo well, it's cool. It looks cool. It's not innovative, though. It's not something new. Um, 
I can't think of uh, the, the Shadow Colossus thing, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, that's really it. I was hoping to see something from about Shinbu 3 or the FFR, F7R, but they don't have anything on that yet, which I guess is indicative of the fact that the remake's going through some growing pains, if you will. They originally had uh, hired out um, CC2 uh, to work on, I guess, I don't know if it was for um, character design or animatics or something, or if it was just the cinematics bits, but they've uh, kind of fired them from that job, and uh, Squeenix has taken it back in-house, so um, we'll see what comes out of that. Probably means that it'll take a, lot longer t a little bit longer to uh, get it done, if they're going to do it in-house entirely. So we all know that Squeenix time puts Valve time to shame. Not sure how I dodged that attack. It's like coming right for my face. So we've got a boss fight now. I have no clue what the boss is, so we'll find out. Oh, hell. Two insects. Two insect kings. Oh, come on. That pillar should have stopped him. Oh, they didn't drop anything. Or definitely gone back. I'm not gonna... Came back alive. <laughs> that came back alive thing. You came back alive. Good job. All right, let's go ahead and put some stuff out. That's uh, weaker than. And what they have will do that. Hopefully, it doesn't bring charm in because that's weaker than the one she has now. I'm not sure if they actually equip stuff that's weaker or not. Though they might. I'm not sure though. Alright, let's go down to the store. We're briefly over a million picks. A piece of armor for Caillou. How about... Big fat nothing? No. Um... Well, you wanted armor, so this is armor. So, Caillou, what can we scalp you for? So, one, uh, no, uh, 105, and his wallet is at 60k. So, you can, you can afford this. Should have checked that first, but... Okay, um, now I gotta do some research here. So, selling a high demand item for the guy is, her man is 255, and his wallet is level 9, so for 540,000, definitely be able to buy this. So, 255. Uh, 255. Okay, 107. It's a display item, so you can probably get 109. So, I'm gonna buy it for 70. And give you your bit of coin.
So you want a steel sword? You can go 110 with him. And that's it, huh? Price of sweets has decreased. Crap. Shields has normalized and uh, uncertain. Don't think I have anything. Oh, I have stuff over here in the vending machine, don't I? Yeah. Nope, no candy. It's your imagination that there was any at all in this vending machine ever. Because there wasn't. We also have the uh, items to, to hand out to the winter clo clothing or cold weather clothing or whatever they said. Okay, you want to buy that? Mr. Old Guy. It's going to cost you 110%. Oh, damn. Um, I want to buy an item that's not in any kind of... From Nagi... Say Nagi... 70%? Yeah, 70%. So, 70% of this is going to be around 17 or so. I have food. Ah, oh, crap. Um, something that's not. There you go, an ultra burger. So, 104. There's a 5 for the little girl. 104 for the girl. Oh, got a wallet up. So, what is she at now? Girl is at level 8 reputation wallet, which is 48k. Buying an item that's in low demand from the old man. 36%. KTL. Thick robe is a. It's thick, thick robe. That means it's good for cold weather. <laughs> it's probably not called thick robe. Um, it's probably called something else, and it's a translation issue. I wouldn't be surprised.
Oh well, I don't care. More items for me to sell. I can pull these damn purity rings out. Hundred and twenty five thousand, oh my god. That is huge. She definitely cannot afford the one I put out there on the thing. Probably could do this one. Well, definitely 48k. So she could afford it. Um, so 104. <laughs> Okay, food, food it is. And back up to a million pigs. Come on, buy it already. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> mm, Two hundred warriors. Do I have hats? Yeah, I have hats. Alright, so um, I'm going to go ahead and take a break from recording. We'll do some more a little bit later. Um, probably open the shop twice more today and try and sell some of the stuff and then uh, head back to the dungeons with Louie to uh, check out the next section of uh, areas. <laughs> 